opera, Ernest Dudley's thriller featuring a sinister psychiatrist reluctantly lending his skills to the police. Today he's investigating the dealings of a mysterious Spanish count. The technical boffins have done everything possible to clean up the sound, so forgive any rough edges, but this is about as close as you could get to how A Case for Dr. Morrell sounded in 1957. Here we are. Thank you so much for bringing us home. Not at all, Lady Ford. Hope you enjoyed the party. Oh, my wife and I did very much, yes. Good night. Good night, Sir Tefford. Good night, Lady Ford. Good night. Most kind of you to give us a lift. A pleasure. <laughs> that was a very nice party. Yes. I didn't realize it was so late. It's two o'clock. There's no light in Cynthia's room. No, oh, she'll have gone to bed hours ago. <sighs> I'm tired. We're getting too old for these late nights. <laughs> <sighs> you go up to bed. I'll bring some hot milk. Thank you, dear. The funny smell of gas. Yes, it's gas, all right. Someone must have left a gas tap on in the kitchen. Uh, I'll go and see. Uh, don't worry, dear. By Jove, there is a strong smell. Gosh, it's overpowering. Where's the switch? What the hell? Cynthia! 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 BBC presents a case for Dr. Morell. Another adventure by Ernest Dudley, with Cecil Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frail. The Blackmailer. Come in. Sir Clifford Forbes, Inspector. Oh, good morning, Sir Clifford. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, it's, uh, it's very good of you to see me, Inspector Hood. Do you mind if I smoke my pipe? Of course not. Now, just begin wherever you like and see if we can help you. Well, as you know, Inspector, my wife and I and our daughter live in Winchester. Our daughter, Cynthia, is barely 19. She's our only child. Well, last summer we took her to Spain. Cynthia met a Count Raymond Alvaro. They fell in love and became engaged to be married. He travels between Madrid and London frequently and has been to our home two or three times. When do they propose to get married? Uh, in the autumn. I understand, sir. About two weeks ago, Cynthia came to London to go to a rather special party with her fiancé. Since her return, she's been a completely different girl. Different, Sir Clifford? It was as if she was terrified of something. My wife and I got nowhere with her. And then a couple of nights ago, we'd been out to dinner, we came back and I found Cynthia with her head in the gas oven. I was just in time to save her. The well, next day, she tried to gas herself again. The doctor got her into a nursing home where she's under constant watch so that she can't do herself any harm. Of course, I realize, of course, that an attempt to commit suicide is an offense. Oh, no need to worry about that, Sir Clifford. It wouldn't be our job in a case like this to aggravate the situation. We'd want to try and help. Thank you. If we can, and that's the problem. Your object in coming to Scotland Yard is to see if we can find out what's at the back of your daughter's attempts on her own life. My wife and I and the doctor have talked it over and... It's quite obvious since they will never tell us what's wrong. It would appear from what you say that it's linked up with this visit to London. She was perfectly all right when she went, but she was a different person when she came back. Well, I'm afraid, Sir Clifford, I don't see what action we can take. But there must be something responsible for our daughter's state of mind. But it isn't a police matter. So far as we're concerned, she's receiving proper care and attention in the nursing home. The danger of her taking her life is diminished. And when she recovers, she'll leave the nursing home and that'll be that. But can't you investigate what's behind it all? Well, how could we? To start with, we should have to question your daughter. Which, if she let us do so, might only succeed in aggravating her condition without achieving any results. I see. Sir Clifford, if later you would discover something which you felt we could act upon, uh, please communicate with me again. All right. I'm afraid I've just wasted your time. No, no, no. Please don't think that. I only wish there's something we could do. It's dreadful to feel so helpless. Yes, I really am very sorry. Just a minute, Sir Clifford. What is it? It's just occurred to me that I could put you on to someone who might be able to help you. Who, Inspector? Well, he's a personal friend of mine, as a matter of fact. 
Perhaps you may have heard of him. His name is Dr. Morell. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Sir Clifford Forbes. Uh, I have an appointment with Dr. Morell. Oh, yes, Sir Clifford. Uh, Inspector Hood rang up this morning about you, didn't he? Yeah. It's very good of Dr. Morell to see me at such short notice. I know. If you'll come this way, please. As Inspector Hood has pointed out to you, Sir Clifford, it would appear evident that your daughter's present condition is in some way connected with her visit to London. Well, that seems to be the case, Dr. Morell. Was she looking forward to the visit? Very much. It was the first time she'd been on her own. In fact, my wife would have preferred to have gone with her. Why didn't she? Well, after all, Cynthia is no longer a child. Besides, she'd be in the company of Raymond, her fiancé. Count Alvaro? Yes. She stayed at Christie's Hotel? Uh, yes, they know us. We always stay there whenever we come up to London. Where is Count Alvaro now? In Madrid. He's due to return to London any day. Did he know of your daughter's illness? Uh, no. They've been writing to each other and she received a letter the morning of her first attempt to gas herself. Did you read that letter? My wife did. Uh, she doesn't usually open her daughter's correspondence, of course. But in this case, we thought it might have something to do with what had happened. But there was nothing? No, it was the sort of letter one might expect. Very affectionate, a uh, love letter. It's one of our worries. What is going to be Raymond's reaction to this dreadful business? Doubtless that's worrying your daughter, too. They're deeply in love with each other. He he'll have to know, I suppose. Well, if he's deeply in love with her, that shouldn't affect the situation. I don't know. He's most sympathetic and understanding, but he comes from a very distinguished family. He may feel obliged to reconsider whether under these unhappy circumstances he should go through with the marriage. Did your daughter discuss her visit on her return home? Well, hardly at all. That was what made us realize something was wrong. How long did she stay in London? She went away on the Friday and returned late uh, Monday evening. The object of the visit was to attend this big party with Count Alvaro? That was to be on the Saturday night. Uh -huh. She was going to a theatre with him as well and visiting some of his friends. Uh, he had to return to Spain on Monday morning early. That was why Cynthia came back by herself. So far as you know, uh, she was in his company most of the time when, of course, he would have looked after her. We're pretty sure of that. He's most kind and thoughtful. He's about ten years older than Cynthia, and I think that was why she fell in love with him, because he's so reliable. It would appear that whatever it was upset your daughter and set in train these unhappy events transpired when she was alone. I suppose so. Mm -hmm. We can't very well get in touch with him without giving away what's happened. Of course. Where does he live when he's in London? Well, he's got a flat in Cavendish Street. You would describe him as a man of wealth? Oh, yes. His family are very rich. He travels a lot. My secretary, Miss Frail, had better come in and take notes of everything you can remember relating to your daughter's stay in London. Uh, very well. Any detail that you can recall may have some significance. I'll get Miss Frail now. Oh, five o'clock and still mass is to be done. Well, I've, I've got all the notes, Dr. Morell. Thank you, Miss Frail. Sir Clifford Forbes talked at length, but the only useful information we seem to have is the hotel where his daughter stayed. That may well prove a source of information. I hope so. I also have this snapshot of the young woman and her husband to be. Oh, mm. she's very pretty, though a little insipid, don't you think? He's attractive in that dark Spanish way. Shouldn't have thought she'd have been his type at all. Does it necessarily follow that a certain type of man must be attracted to a certain type of woman or vice versa? Oh, yes, Doctor. It's all a matter of uh, chemicals. Oh, but then surely you know that. I've often wondered. The chemicals that go to make up one individual's character and personality can have tremendous effect upon someone else's chemicals. Sometimes they act like a magnet, drawing each to each. Sometimes the reverse, they repel each other. At other times, the moment the opposite lot of chemicals meet and collide, there's a terrific explosion. Which is precisely what will happen now, Miss Frail, unless you stop your interminable chatter. Oh, I'm so sorry, Doctor. Was I going on? No, uh, where were we? Um, are we going to see the daughter? It may be necessary. Uh, first, however, inquiries at the hotel where she stayed might yield some results. Uh, some member of the staff might have noticed something amiss. Christie's Hotel. Hmm, I'll ring up for you to see the manager. Do that, Miss Frey. Uh, come in. Yes, sir. No, come in, Lily. Uh, this is Lily, Dr. Morell, who looks after the floor where Miss Forbes had her bedroom. 
Uh, this is Dr. Morell and Miss Frail. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Lily. I sent for you because Dr. Morell would like to ask you about the time when Miss Forbes was staying here. Two weeks ago. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Doctor, I remember it very well. Miss Forbes had the same room she always had when she stayed here with Sir Clifford and Lady Forbes. That's right, sir, she did. We are an old established hotel, Dr. Morell, and uh, some of our guests like to have the same accommodation they've had before. Uh, this was the first time that Miss Forbes has stayed here alone? Yes, Doctor. In fact, we have one or two little jokes about it while she was here. Well, that is... What were you going to say, Lily? It's this, Miss. I was remembering that it was only the first two nights that she was in a joking mood. Friday night and the Saturday night. When I saw her before she went out to the party. I saw her again next evening and something seemed to have upset her. Uh, did you obtain any idea what was wrong? I asked her, but she said it was nothing. She looked as if she hadn't slept a wink all night, poor thing. And she'd been so happy and full of life when she arrived. I felt ever so sorry. Uh, come in. You uh, sent for me, sir? Uh, yes, Henry. Uh, this is Dr. Morell and Miss Prale. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, Henry was the floor waiter, Dr. Morell, who served Miss Forbes. And you used to take breakfast to Miss Forbes in her room every morning? That's right, sir. Can you remember any incident about Miss Forbes which impressed you at the time? Well, only that on uh, Sunday morning she was in a very upset state and she ate no breakfast at all. Miss Forbes had appeared perfectly normal the previous morning? Oh, definitely. Well, like she always was when she stayed with Sir Clifford and Lady Forbes. It was the same thing the next morning, Monday, the day she went away. All she had was a cup of tea, right off her food she was. She offered no explanation for her sudden lack of appetite? No, sir. I did ask her if there was uh, anything wrong with the food or anything, but she said it wasn't that. And she wouldn't say what it really was? No, miss. No, thank you, Henry. And will you tell Parks to come up? Yes, sir. Uh, Parks, the hotel porter, he might prove more talkative. Well, it isn't how talkative, but what they say that matters. <coughs> Quite. No, uh, Parks won't be long. It was about 12 o'clock. I was outside the hotel and I saw Miss Forbes come out. I asked her if she wanted a taxi. She shook her head and hurried across the street. I saw her stop and talk to a man in a doorway. He looked as if he'd been waiting for her. Did you get a clear impression of him? Oh, I'd know him again, if that's what you mean. He wasn't wearing a hat, and he'd got very fair hair. He was thick-set and middle-aged. I saw Miss Forbes give him something. It, uh, well, it looked like a big envelope, and he gave her something in return. He walked away very quickly, though he had a bit of a limp. Miss Forbes hurried back across the street to the hotel. She was putting something in her handbag. Slipped to the pavement and I saw it was a small envelope. I was going to pick it up for her, but she was too quick. She snatched it up and dashed past me. Uh, later on, I got a taxi for her to take her to the station. She wasn't looking at all well, I thought, and, oh, well, she barely spoke to me. You have been most helpful. Now, thank you, Parks. Oh, anything I can do to help, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good oh. afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. Well... That's about it, Dr. Morell. We're very grateful to you. I can't think of anyone else in the hotel who could give you any more information. I was hoping someone might have seen Miss Forbes when she came back from the party. Well, it might have been useful, especially if she'd been accompanied by someone whose description we could have obtained. Miss Forbes must have come in when the night porter happened to be absent. But surely it would have been her boyfriend, Count, whatever his name is, who brought her back. It may not have been. Well, I fear I put you to a great deal of trouble. Not a bit, Dr. Morell. I do hope that this sad business will soon be cleared up. Hello, this is Dr. Morell's house. Oh, good evening, Sir Clifford. Well, the doctor's in the laboratory. Will you hold on, please? Dr. Morell? Ah, uh, Miss Frail, uh, just turn off that thing, would you? Uh, yes. Uh, doctor? Uh, take that test tube and put it on the rack. Uh, but, but Doctor... Uh, don't drop it. No, Doctor. I fancy I'm arriving somewhere in determining the difference between blood groups in relation to the criminal tendencies of the person involved. Yes, I'm sure you are. Uh, my belief that any emotional upheaval must give rise to certain glandular reactions which in their turn might have an effect upon the blood undoubtedly has some basis. Doctor, Sir Clifford Ford on the telephone... And if this effect remains apparent in the blood for a length of time afterwards, the conclusion to be drawn... Would... Sir Clifford Forbes? 
Why didn't you tell me instead of standing there gossiping? Yes, Dr. Morell. I'll speak to him. Dr. Morell here, Sir Clifford. When did you discover this? 250 pounds. I understand. Yes, yes, just as soon as I have any news. Goodbye. Well, what is it, Dr. Morell? What's he found out? On the morning before his daughter left to return home, she cashed a cheque at her London bank for 250 pounds. 250 pounds? That's a lot of money. Miss Forbes happened to be somewhat well off. Oh, how lovely. There appears to be no trace of the cash. You mean it's all gone? Whatever of them? Murder. What? Murder of the soul, Miss Frail. Blackmail. <laughs> Dr. Morella, sure as eggs. It's what I suspected from the start. You mean that was the blackmailer whom Miss Forbes met outside the hotel? The hotel porter's description fits. The fair hair, the limp. That was all I needed. That'll be criminal records on the line, if you'll excuse me. Inspector Hood here. He's identified him, has he? I was pretty sure. Send the dossier up. Is it the man you think? Yes, Miss Frail. Harry Fox. The last time I got him four years. He can't have been out more than six months. Like most criminals, he continues to pursue the same nefarious trade, even though he knows that by so doing, he must inevitably encompass his own destruction. Well, that's your theory, I know, Dr. Muriel. It is more than a theory, my dear Inspector. Here is demonstrable proof. Oh, that poor girl. But how could she have got caught up with someone so horrible? What is this man's mode of operation? Oh, the old stuff works with an accomplice put some story over on his victim. I know Harry Fox, and I can just see in my mind how he'd work it in this case. It would be at the party this girl was at. He'd be a guest there. Oh, he'd wriggle his way in, trust him. He'd size up the situation, pick the right moment. Miss Forbes? Yes? Sorry to barge in like this, but, uh, Count Alvaro... What is it? Has anything... It's all right, Miss Forbes. Something's happened. He's been taken ill. It's uh, nothing. Raymond, where is he? Really, it's nothing serious, but uh, he's gone back to his flat. He's not hurt. Just a fainting attack, that's all. He sent me to ask if you could come along. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, has he got a doctor? No one's on the way. I'm a friend, by the way. I'm staying with Raymond. Let's hurry. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I've got a taxi waiting. We are nearly there, Miss Forbes. Poor Raymond. It seemed perfectly all right while we were dancing. Oh, then he went to get a drink. Oh, it was a sudden attack that hit him, but uh, not to worry. I expect the doctor will be there now. Oh, I do hope he's all right. Here we are. Thank you. I'll just pay the driver. I've got a key. Uh, come on in, Miss Forbes. Come on in. There you are, Dr. Morell. That's about how it would go. He gets her into the flat, dopes her drink or coffee, and when she wakes up, she finds she's been photographed, looking as if she's been on one of those wild parties or in Harry Fox's amorous embrace. Mm, quite a vivid imagination of yours, Inspector. I tell you, I know how Fox works. Oh, absolutely sickening. The victim has to buy back the photographs. Takes quite a time because Mr. Fox naturally hangs on to the negatives. Why was she such a fool as to pay up? That's what I can't understand. Well, I mean, if I was ever caught like that, well, not that I ever should be, of course. Of course not. I'm sure you would. But if I ever was, I know what I'd do. What? This might be quite interesting, Miss Frail. I'd beat the brute over the head with my umbrella or, or whatever I could lay my hands on. I believe you would. Too. Then I'd send for the police. Or for you, Dr. Morell. You flatter me. You may rest assured that a blackmailer would never single you out for his attention. Mm, just let him try. Now, the point is, you see, he invariably picks his victim very carefully. Someone he knows will react to the situation the way he wants. Who will think of the scandal, the shame, exposure, and who panics. He's a real psychologist. Are you, Dr. Morell? Uh, to a certain extent, he can weigh up the character of the person he proposes to enmesh in his toils. As in the case of this girl, he played upon her youthful inexperience, and in particular, upon the fact that she was engaged to be married. Her prospective husband would be horrified by what had befallen her. 
Poor thing. What are we going to do, Dr. Morell? Meet Mr. Fox. I think that might be arranged. Come in. The Harry Fox dossier, Inspector. Oh, thanks. There you are, Dr. Morell. Have a glance at it. There's also some stuff on a character he's worked with in the past, uh, with the photos. Right. Oh, by the way, Sergeant, I'd like to have a chat with dear Harry. Where's he hang out of an evening? Harry Fox, Inspector. Oh, I think I know where you can pick him up. He's at the Grey Parrot Club every evening. Do you think he'll be long, Inspector Hood? Why, don't you like this joint? It gives me the creeps. <laughs> Not to worry. Dr. Morell will join us any minute. You'll feel safe enough then. Oh, I feel safe enough with you. I wonder why he left us on the way here from Scotland Yard. To make a phone call, he said. Well, he could have done that from your office. Perhaps it's someone he doesn't want us to know about. A secret girlfriend, Miss Frail? Inspector Hood, as if he'd... Oh, oh you were fooling, weren't you? <laughs> He's got some card up his sleeve, I shouldn't wonder. Well, what happens when this fox creature does turn up? Rather depends on what ideas Dr. Morell's got. Hello, Great Parrot Club. Farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. So long. Well, I wonder who that phone call was for. This is the sort of place where customers leave or collect messages. Mm, looked a bit sinister to me. Fox will never recognize you in this murky lighting. Well, that barman was on to me the moment I came in. They can smell a flatty a mile off. Oh, here's Dr. Morell. Oh, Miss Frail has been quite worried about you, Doctor. Did you make your phone call all right? You should know, Miss Frail. What do you mean? As if I could read your mind. Ah, that tune. I do know who you phoned. But you are improving, Miss Frail. But I, I don't... What think... is this going on? A mental telepathy act? Miss Frail will now expound. Don't you remember, Inspector? The phone call the barman took. That radio was playing Beautiful Dreamer. La, 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 I la, la. I got it. You were humming that, Dr. Morell, so you must have heard it when you phoned the barman. <laughs> How clever of you. Oh, we plodding flatties get by now and again. But why did you phone, Dr. Morell? Did you... What is it? Fox. He just come in. The fair hair and the limp. Yes, but he doesn't look at all horrible. Well, if he did, he'd hardly get very far in his chosen trade. No, I suppose not. Well, what do we do now? Dr. Morell, it's for you to say. He's the barman speaking to him. I think we might be getting along, Inspector. Hey, but, but what about him? I merely wanted to be sure he received the message. We can be waiting for him. Come along, Miss Frey. I don't follow it at all. Then just follow me. I think we'd better, Inspector. Dr. Morell always knows where he's going. Here we are, Dr. Morell. Is this the address? My message to Fox will bring him back here. What now? If your driver will proceed a little further along, we can await Fox's arrival. All right, Sergeant. 